Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Melka University, Tuesday, April 9th, 2013. Tonight, we're very pleased to have Kurt Lamon, the president of Urethane Supply Company, with us. Uh, Urethane Supply has been solely in the plastic repair and refinishing business since 1981 and brings a, uh, a level of expertise uh, surpassed by none in the, uh, in the methodology and the equipment used to repair uh, plastics, particularly plastic bumpers, and as you know, uh, just about every collision uh, that ends up in the shop today uh, most likely will will affect either the front or rear bumper. So uh, there certainly is uh, plenty of demand for the technology that urethane supply brings to the market, and I think after tonight's presentation you'll see uh, not only is it the right equipment and right process to use, uh, but it's the most profitable not only for your shops but for you, the jobbers, as well. So with that, uh, I'll turn tonight's presentation over to Kurt Lamont. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much, guys. Um, and thank you very much for uh, joining the uh, conference here tonight. Uh, this is my first time to do a webinar, so if I goof up a little bit, I hope you'll uh, understand. Uh, I think uh, Mark and Eric have uh, guided me through this pretty well. Uh, but uh, anyway, I hope that most of you have at least heard of nitrogen plastic welding. This is a that really the latest technology in plastic repair, uh, and it's really taken over for uh, for the, the variety of reasons, but uh, that's what I wanted to go through this uh, with you tonight. Um, and uh, I guess, uh, Eric, would this be a time for me to say something about, you, know, you guys can post on the chat as far as if you want to ask any questions. Don't hesitate to interrupt me or ask a question at any time. I'm, I mean, this is uh, supposed to be to... Uh, to help you guys learn about this technology, and if I've left something out, I want—I definitely want to hear from you guys, and and uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so I'll go through this uh, nitrogen plastic welding. Let's see here, we got this thing. Okay. Now, the uh, nitrogen uh, plastic welding. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, first of all, why plastic repair? Period. I mean, uh, five years ago, if you were to ask a body shop. Uh, if they about plastic repair, um, they definitely were, were didn't want to do it. Um, most of the insurance companies were happy to write replacement bumpers. Um, so uh, what's the what's in it for the body shop if they do plastic repair? Then we'll talk about why nitrogen welding. Uh, what's the whole thing about nitrogen? Why not hot air? Then we'll talk about nitrogen versus air. We'll talk about welding versus epoxies. And then we'll, of course, talk about some insurance company issues. After that, we will actually talk about the uh, nitrogen welding so system itself, part number 6056, some of the customer testimonials that we've gotten about the system, and then we'll do a little te technology. We'll show a little video on, on, the, uh, on the welder, how it works, and then finally, uh, how do you guys participate in getting this new technology out to the field. All right. Um, before I get started, though, I want to uh, show you guys a video. Now, this was actually taken by a jobber representative last week. And as you can see right here, this is a half of a bumper. Our salesman welded this in the corner, this very highly stressed area right here in the corner. Uh, welded it right there. And this gentleman here is going to uh, show you the strength of this right now in a video. He's going to get on top of that thing and just stomp on it. And as you can see, it doesn't give up. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, very strong, and uh, that's what we do when we go into a shop. We, The first thing we want to do is demonstrate the strength of this system. More than anything else, if we show them that first, they're, they'll open their eyes and their ears, and they'll listen to our presentation. So... Uh, as I get into this, I'll we'll definitely uh, get into more of this. Uh, let's see. Here's the agenda. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, why plastic repair? Um, and most of you guys know, I'm sure, that uh, if you replace the bumper, you are probably making 20 to 25 percent on the parts. Uh, obviously, if you're doing the labor, the labor uh, for the shop is more like 50 percent. So just that alone um, is enough to uh, 
uh, if you give them the technology to, to allow them to do the repair and have confidence in its strength, then they're definitely making more money on labor. So that's what we want to try to do is, is prove to the shop that they, they've got a technology and that tool that, that they can have confidence in. Uh, you're going to maximize your labor hours for a greater profit um, and reducing cycle time. I'll get into more of that later, but um, there's so many instances where uh, maybe a part is on back order. I had a call last just two days ago from a shop who had a Mercedes, for certain Mercedes part that was on national back order, and they had like a 14-day uh, lead time on it. And our salesman was actually in the shop at the time and did the demonstration on that particular bumper. They put it back on the car, and it was out. You know, it was done that day. So that would really move the needle for a shop in a DRP relationship as far as reducing their, their cycle time. Now, um, obviously, that would reduce the average cost to repair as well. Um, and there's obviously a lot of room for negotiation on uh, some of the more expensive bumpers, but, um, you know, especially for shops in a DRP relationship, they're able to reduce the cost of the repair. That also will attract more business to their shop. Um, uh, another factor is the fact that uh, plastics on cars is set to increase a lot. Um, new materials, we're talking about carbon fiber. Obviously, you can't use this on carbon fiber, but more and more um, of the manufacturers, in order to achieve that new CAFE standard in 2025 of 54.5 miles per gallon over the fleet, they're going to need to reduce weight. We're already seeing cars getting smaller. You know, as, as the weight's reduced, they can reduce the size and weight of all the components. Um, so plastic is going to play a big role in that. And so the bottom line there is plastic is definitely not going away. I don't think any shop in the country that's, that wants to stay in business over the next 10 to 20 years is going to turn their back on doing plastic repair. They're, they definitely want to do it. They realize it. And you want to give them a tool that they can use to do the job Again, you want to have, they want to have confidence in that tool, and that's what we want to show them with this system. And finally, uh, insurer pressure to do more repairs, definitely a huge factor right now. Uh, we had a, one of our salesmen did a presentation with GEICO in January up in Virginia, and it absolutely exploded uh, the interest in this product across the country with GEICO uh, ARX shops. And... Uh, and so that's that's a huge role. Uh, State Farm has also got some videos on their website uh, with this uh, the high tech toolbox. So a lot of the uh, shops have been exposed to this. Um, also, ICAR, the latest plastic repair course, the PLA03, the uh, nitrogen welding system is is shown in that as well. So it's a legitimate repair technology. Uh, not only it's not just your thing supply company waving the banner either. We've got some competition now. Uh, Pro Spot and Bumper Smith have both got nitrogen systems out now, so it's a recognized technology. And I feel, you know, we are the leader. We brought this out on the market first, and I feel like, as Mark said earlier, we are, you know, with 30, what, 32 years of experience in plastic repair and refinishing, um, that plastic, that urethane supply company is still uh, going to be the leader in this technology. Okay, uh, one thing that's a little bit weird about this. There's, I feel like I'm talking to myself here, so hopefully if there's somebody out here listening to this thing. Um, okay, another factor for plastic repair. Why um, why not, and see that little blemish in the middle of the bumper there, why not repair that and then blend in the panel? Um, that saves, you know, if you were to replace this bumper, you're talking about, a, um, you know, blending into the fenders, um, into the undamaged uh, panels, why take the risk? I mean, uh, the shop the shop can can um, make it a lot easier, uh, a lot less do this repair a lot less expensively, and still and make and make a good profit on this thing by by repairing the, the uh, area and then blending in the panel. Uh, okay, and then uh, really, if you look at the total business, 20 25 percent of the 
business is customer pay, and if a shop can help a customer in, a, in that sort of situation save money, boy, they've built a lot of loyalty there. I mean, you're, if they ever come back with a with a collision that's going to require the insurance company to get involved, um, they're they're going to have a much um, a better feeling about going back to the shop and saving them some money. So that's one factor as well. And a huge thing now, of course, is keeping the cars from being totaled. You're looking there at a couple of head, Lexus LS460 headlights. They're over $2,000 a piece. You know, if a shop can repair a tab that broke off the backside, that may make the difference between the car being totaled and the car, um, you know, or, the, you know, having a, a situation where they're going to derive some revenue off that. Okay, so I think uh, there's nothing here that's uh, earth-shattering. I just wanted to go through the points here. I, I think everybody realizes that it's more profitable to repair plastics. It's just up till now, there really hasn't been a great technology. The two-part adhesives um, are are good. I mean, we make them ourselves. It's a very important part of the uh, plastic repair system, but... Uh, you know, they're, they're limited in some of the things they can do, and that's what I want to show you about the nitrogen welding. Okay, then let's talk about that. Why, why nitrogen welding? Okay. First of all, um, you're going to be able to do repairs much more quickly with the welder than you can with a two-part adhesive. Two-part adhesives, by their nature, you mix a part A and a part B, and they form the solid through a chemical reaction that takes some time to to occur. Uh, you're looking at at least 15, 20 minutes probably to uh, get it to cure out to the point where you can sand it. Um, so with our system, with the thermoplastic, you're actually melting the uh, plastic ribbon to the bumper with, and I'll get into it later, but the, the nitrogen does not burn or oxidize the plastic at all, so it's extremely strong. And you can literally cool it off with shop air or even water and sand it immediately, and it'll feather with a 36 grit roll lock. So that's one advantage is the speed. Another is the, um, is the strength. Uh, you're fusion welding to the plastic, again, with no oxidation because you're welding with a shielding gas. Uh, the oxygen doesn't attack the melted plastic. It doesn't burn it. Uh, so it's a very strong weld. And then also you can do tighter repairs. Um, with a two-part adhesive, you've got to bevel it out, probably a total width of at least an inch and a half or two on either side of the repair. Uh, with the nitrogen welder, you can literally dig a quarter inch wide um, V groove and do a, a really strong repair with that. So it allows you to do repairs to uh, tight areas, detail areas like tabs, holes, grill bars, things like that that you cannot do with two parts. Uh, this is a perfect example. It's a late model Camaro bumper. You see from the inside there that that uh, rectangular uh, hole that is torn out is about the thickness of a, a business card. Very thin. Uh, there, I don't think any shop would attempt to repair this bumper with a two-part. You also see the other uh, tab with a hole broken out there. Uh, again, not as thin, but also a detailed area that has to be really flat on the backside. With the nitrogen welder, you can get in there and do a nice, very quality repair, strong repair on both of those locations and put it back on the car. So with the nitrogen welder, you're, you're saving bumpers that are definitely going to the landfill if you do not use this technology. And that is putting labor dollars in the shop's pocket. Uh, there's also a little lower consumable cost. Uh, with the two-part adhesive, um, not even considering the adhesive itself. Uh, just the mixer tips, you're going to need one on the back and one on the front. At least you're talking two, maybe three bucks for those two tips. With a couple of sticks of rod, you're, less, you're about a buck. So the shop is going to be able to save some money on consumables. And again, that's not, not even considering the $30 cost for the, the cartridge itself. And also, there's no shelf life on the rods either. You buy a rod, and you pick it up 10 years from that, it'll still work. Uh, Two-part adhesive, and you don't want to try that. And finally, on that point, uh, you can, with a welder, you can repair other plastics like overflow bottles, uh, washer bottles. Those are both made of polyethylene, which no adhesive will stick to. 
the only way to repair that is with the uh, with a welder. And it does, of course, the welding system comes with a polyethylene welding rod. So you can fix that kind of stuff. You can fix radiator tanks, believe it or not, the nylon radiator tanks, uh, of course, headlights, uh, interior plastics, literally any kind of plastic on the vehicle you can repair with this system other than fiberglass. I mean, uh, you can fix urethane. Um, so you name it, you can fix it with the, uh, more or less, you can fix it with the nitrogen welder. All right, let's talk a little bit about welding versus two-part epoxies. Uh, again, if you think about that uh, Camaro bumper we talked about, you can, uh, again, repair those detail areas like holes, slots, grill bars, um, those areas that you can fix. You can, it's really hard to fix with the two parts. Um, again, it's faster. There's no cure time. You can uh, literally cool it off with, with air or water and sand it immediately. So you can do the whole repair sanded and uh, ready for the glaze without it walking away from the bumper. You know, with a two-part, you got to squirt the uh, stuff on, uh, go off and do something else while it cures, come back later, sand it, and uh, prep the other side, that sort of thing. With this, you can do the back side, cool it, come to the front side, weld it, cool it, sand it smooth, and get it ready for glaze all in one, one shot. So it does speed up the process a lot. It's stronger, again, it fuses with, the, uh, with no oxidation, a uh, two-part is really, you know, it's obviously a chemical that's completely uh, different from the bumper material itself. Uh, usually you're talking about an epoxy two-part, sometimes an acrylic or urethane two-part. And these are just adhesives that stick to the surface. Uh, that's why surface prep is very important when you're working with a two-part adhesive. you got to get the surface clean. You want to get a good sand scratch on it. You don't want any shiny spots or sharp edges or anything like that. You know, prep is very important. With the, with the welder, prep is not quite so critical. You do want to get it clean, and you want to grind a V-groove, but basically a die grinder is all you need. And then you just uh, melt, those, melt, melt the bumper together with the welding rod using a stream of hot nitrogen gas for no oxidation. And, again, just to reiterate, it's less expensive. You're talking $2 for the repair versus 30 bucks. Okay. Hope everybody's got that so far. I hope I'm not going too fast. Again, uh, why nitrogen, okay? Um, it's very basic. Um, how do you start a fire? You need a source of fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. If you snuff out a fire, you, you want to put a blanket over or whatever, to, you want to snuff out the oxygen. That's what kills a fire. So what we're doing when we weld with nitrogen or a shielding gas is you're using, you're using the shielding gas to flush away the air so that there's no oxygen that will hit that melted plastic um, and oxidize it, if you, that makes sense. You can, and it's not only nitrogen. Let me make that point clear. Um, you can also use argon. You can use argon CO2. If you want to, you can use helium if you can find it. But the main thing is nitrogen is cheaper, more available. A lot of shops will prefer to use your, the argon CO2 because they've already got it for their MIG welder, so why keep another uh, type of gas around? Just use the same gas, maybe buy an extra spare bottle. The main thing is you want to flush the oxygen in the air away from the, from the uh, melted plastic, so you're not burning the plastic. Again, like, like I said, you're welding with nitrogen, so you melt the plastic cleanly, and there's, there's no burning of the plastic. And actually, if you weld with air and look closely, especially if you weld with some of the wider ribbons, you can actually see ash form uh, and, and, and soot will form right there in the weld line. In fact, I was welding some uh, a nylon, uh, which is a high temperature plastic, uh, not too long ago. Welding it, you have to go really slow with the nylon and turn up the heat quite high. And I could I could literally see sparks uh, forming when, when 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 the air was hitting it. So that's why the nitrogen is is real important for the maximum strength. And another uh, story here, um, we, Urethane Supply Company, has traditionally sold a lot of product to bumper recyclers around the country. And these are shops, of course, um, that focus on doing plastic bumper repairs. They'll take the damaged cores from the shops, bring them into their uh, location, um, 
repair the, the, the damage, uh, prime them, and, and sell them back to the body shops. Um, we had one customer in New Jersey that was uh, doing uh, hot air welding, and they'd done that for years. And it's uh, something that uh, you know their, their technicians were very comfortable with, familiar with. They, they knew the technology. Um, and when they switched to nitrogen, their comebacks went down by 50% as far as rejects for broken wells and so forth. So you're just you know, by just replacing the air with nitrogen, their comebacks went down by 50%. So that tells you that it's not a fluke or I'm not trying to blow smoke here. It's really this is something that works um, by excluding the oxygen from the welded area. You definitely make the repair stronger. And actually, I like to say that we invented nitrogen welding, but it's not true. Um, that was actually, we actually just brought it back from the aerospace industry back in the 1950s. Back then, they discovered that you could uh, weld polypropylene, especially with nitrogen, and get a much stronger repair. So now that the bumpers have pretty much gone to polypropylene across the industry, we feel that nitrogen offers you know, a stronger repair. And it's, again, it's back now, so we're, we're um, the nitrogen, that's why it's really taken off lately. Okay, let's talk a little bit about insurance company issues. Um, one of the first objections you'll get from the shops is, hey, don't don't tell the insurance companies you can do this. You know, you know I, it only takes me 30 minutes to fix a bumper, and otherwise they'll, they're going to start paying me half an hour to do something. Um, you know, that's, that is a legitimate concern because a lot of the insurance companies are really trying to, you know, cut their costs, too. They're, they're in a very competitive industry, you know, with every, everybody's talking about lower prices. So they've got to try to get their cost savings somewhere. Um, my, my response to that is, number one, some, bur some bumpers are so cheap that you're not going to fix them anyway. You know, if you've got a, a 2005 Honda Civic front that sells on the aftermarket for – 40 bucks, then it really, and, and the insurance company is going to use force that on you. Then you're probably going to, you're probably not going to fix that bumper. Okay, what we're looking to do here is is provide some room for negotiation for the shop when the situation is is a more expensive bumper. And in most cases where you know there's the prices in the range of two fifty three four hundred dollars. There's plenty of room for the shop to make more money and for the insurance company to save money. In other words, if the insurance company is going to pay um, $300 for a, a bumper for a replacement, but the shop says, hey, I'll do that, I'll do that repair for four hours, you know, they're saving the insurance company a lot of money. And if they're able to do that repair more quickly, they are able to make more money. The shop's able to make more money. And the insurance company has got to realize that – in order to promote shops doing plastic repair and getting trained and getting the equipment to do this sort of thing, they got to have some profit motive in it. So I, I think a reasonable person would, would understand that. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the tack I usually take when I get that objection in the shop. Okay. Um, another thing, of course, I mentioned it earlier, uh, by, by reducing the cycle time, um, the shop with a DRP relationship can can um, draw more more business into the door. So um, they, you know, the, the insurance companies are with these DRP relationships are always looking at the uh, performance metrics. You're looking at cycle time, lower average, you know, average cost to repair. Those are huge factors. And uh, we had one of our testimonials. I'll show you later on. Shop claimed a one to one and a half day improvement in their cycle time as a result of using the nitrogen welder. So it definitely makes a difference. Like a, that example I gave you earlier about the Mercedes bumper being on national back order, that was real. I mean, that's happened last week. And uh, the shop gained just because our salesman came in the door. And uh, while I'm talking about that, just, just as a side note, um, I've talked to several jobbers who thank us for working with them because this tool allows them to get into shops that they may not be selling paint to, uh, can build a relationship uh, of that particular jobber being a problem solver. So down the line, if they have any bumps in the road with their paint supplier, they might look more kindly upon you. So they see it 
they see this as a way to get in the door uh, with some with some shops that uh, may not be buying paint from them right now. Okay, that aside there, uh, back to the insurance company stuff. And uh, the, actually, the insurance companies themselves are probably one of our best salespeople. Um, Geico has been really aggressive with the DRP shops and promoting it to the point where I heard from the field that one guy was going to uh, pull a guy's uh, DRP contract if he didn't get a welder. I, I wouldn't. I don't know that personally, but I heard that as a, as a rumor. So Geico is not shy about uh, promoting it. State Farm's a little more conservative. They do say, hey, this is the technology that's there. It might be might be helpful to you. And they have uh, featured in their high-tech toolbox. So it is the word is getting out there. And I can encourage you to, you know, ask any of your Geico, ARX, or State Farm select service shops if uh, – about this product if you want to do a little field research and find out what the awareness level is. Okay, um, no questions so far. We'll go into the, uh, the 6056 nitrogen welding system. The picture there, what you see, is the system. It is, uh, includes a hot air welder, which is a gray box there underneath the blue, or just, just above that blue hose. Um, it's got a temperature control and an uh, air flow control, very simple to use. On top of that is your air to nitrogen switch. Basically, um, when you're running with bottled nitrogen for your welding, you don't want to run it all the time because you'll blow through that nitrogen pretty quickly. So um, you want to run the system on air. Uh, while it's hot, you, get, you have to have airflow through the heating element to keep it cool. Okay, So you, you run it on air until you're actually ready to weld. Then you switch it over to nitrogen. You do your welding with the nitrogen, and then you switch it back to air when you're done. So it's got all that. It's got the airless welder underneath that, uh, so you can smooth the weld out. Uh, you can also use it to weld urethane plastics. Um, it's got a custom-designed MIG cart, which is actually made in the USA to our specs, a uh, very heavy-duty cart. Um, it's got a holster there for both air, hot air and the airless elements. Um, it has power strip uh, toolbox on the top. It's got plenty of welding rod. You get three pounds of polypropylene rod and a selection of all of our other welding rods. It does come with an instructional DVD, actually two of them, and it's completely assembled and plumbed. All the shop has to do is open the box, drop their nitrogen bottle in, and uh, hook it up, and, and they're ready to go. So it's really a, a kind of a plug-and-play sort of a thing. And really, it's really a plastic repair solution in a box. You can you can wheel it to whatever uh, work, work area that you need to use it, uh, do your welding there and wheel it around. Got heavy-duty casters. Uh, again, it's it's, it's uh, really a nice uh, system there. We've got nothing but uh, good good uh, feedback about it. I uh, got a question here. It says, "What is the average time it takes a tech to become proficient with the machine?" That's a great question. Um, the the system itself, at the price level it's at, unfortunately, does not include free factory training. Um, we have to uh, we have to rely on some other things. Now, there's a few things we do. We we really try our best to get this hand the, the, when we're out doing sales demos to get the the product into the hands of the technicians that might be using it, so they get a little bit of experience with it before before uh, we leave. Um, in a situation where a technician hasn't tried it before, um, again the, the system does come with two instructional DVDs. And uh, it's not rocket science. All you really do is, um, as long as you make sure you have airflow through that heating element all the time uh, while it's hot, in other words, don't burn out the heating element, then you just grab a scrap bumper, you play around with it. You know, you watch the video and play around with it. Um, that's one way some shops have done it. Now, I, I understand that a lot of shops would like to get training, and, and we do offer that as well. Uh, we do a lot of times with our factory salespeople when we're in the area doing some sales calls, we will try to do some courtesy training, uh, maybe just an hour or hour and a half or so to uh, show the technicians how to use it. Uh, we also offer uh, training at our factory. We've got uh, quarterly factory uh, sales, I mean, uh, not a salesman, but a uh, technical training course at our factory that a lot of technicians have come to use. Um, and we also will on occasion do a paid visit to a shop um, some particular shops, you know, large shops that uh, really want to take advantage of the system, 
they've actually paid us to come into their shop for an entire day. And w as long as I can schedule the week to work around that, we will do it. So at the end of the presentation, you'll get my phone number, my email address. Please contact me if you're interested in having one of our factory sales reps come out. Um, we've got some ways we can do this. But, um, yeah, that, that definitely is an issue. That's a great question. Uh, another question is what voltage. It's uh, 110. Plug it in the wall. That's all you need. It, I think it draws about three or four amps. So it's uh, really not a, not a big draw on the, on the uh, electrical. All right. Here's a couple of testimonials. Um, this one we got recently from a gentleman named Paul Struhar, Centerline Car Star in Ohio. He says, it's an unbelievable piece of equipment, and it's allowed us to put more labor dollars in our pocket. Again, that's his words and ours. Uh, just backs up the points I've been making about this thing as being a real benefit to the shops. We are wide open with it. We probably use it three or four times a day. We are fixing a lot more bumpers than we used to. My cycle time has improved one to one and a half days because of the nitrogen welder. And that's from Fender Mender in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, you know, that, that's a great uh, testimonial because it shows that this is really benefiting the shop. Again, um, they wouldn't be using it if they weren't making more money. And I think that improved cycle time is definitely drawing more uh, business into their doors. Finally, uh, again from Paul Struhar, uh, when you figure a recondition or aftermarket bumper costs three to $400 on average, and we were able to save at least 12 of them in the first two months using it, then I can say we recouped our investment rather quickly. So it really, it, we've got a little break-even analysis that you can, that I can provide to you guys, but you can, the shop can just plug their numbers in and they can see that this thing will usually pay off inside of six to eight weeks. And, uh, not too many capital investments I've made at the company here recently have paid off that quickly. I wish they did. Okay. Um, I think that does it for the testimonials. Uh, we're going to talk – oh, wait, I've got another question here. Is there any national certification by current organizations such as AWS, ASME, along the, the lines of HDPE certification? I assume that means some sort of welding certification from some third party. Uh, right now, there is not. Uh, this is totally, I mean, it's, uh, there's no association for plastic welders. So um, about the only thing we have in that respect would be the ICAR plastic repair course. Uh, we, as a company, Urethane Supply, have actually looked into getting um, certified by NATEF so we could provide ICAR um, gold class points. Um, but that, it really honestly is, is like we would have to become uh, the curriculum at the level of a of an actual community college to be able to do that, and I'm not saying it's uh, impossible. We definitely want to do that, but right now we just don't have the manpower to focus on that project. So, um, any any uh, customers that come through our doors and take our two day plastic repair course will walk away with a certificate of uh, of uh, for the, for plastic welding, um, but it's not approved by a third party or anything like that. Okay, that segues into the technical the technical side of this. Um, as you know, identifying the plastics is still important. Now, many many of you guys remember, I'm sure, back in the old days with our airless welder, uh, people a lot of objection came from you know they don't know what kind of plastic it is. We've got eight different kinds of welding rods in this kit. Which one do I use? Do I use the black one on black plastic? Do I use the white one on white plastic? And it's it is honestly confusing. I understand that. That's why I think the two parts made so much headway in the late 80s and, and 90s um, because it was simpler. I mean, basically, you just squirt the stuff on there and it sticks. Um, one of the reasons why we have um, success, I think, with the nitrogen welder is because the, the OEMs have really migrated to using polypropylene and TPO for their bumper covers to, for, for most everything, 90 I want to say 98% of your late model covers are made of polypropylene now. If you look at the back side of the bumper and it's black, um, kind of waxy looking, um, it's polypropylene most likely. So you'll see a few oddballs. Or, you know, Mercedes has got a white polypropylene. And some of the older GMs have got kind of a dark uh, dark gray urethane too. you got to watch out for the urethane ones because the nitrogen welder will not work on a urethane bumper. But uh, we have some other 
identification tips uh, for telling the difference between polypropylene and, and urethane, so it's really not that, that tough to do. Um, most outlet housing is polypropylene, um, and most plastic parts will have an ID symbol on them. And it really just takes a little bit of experience. Um, if you decide, hey, I'm going to fix plastics now, you start to look at all the plastics that come off your car, all the different cars. Um, I think the, the shops, the technicians will find that uh, they're, they're pretty common uh, from, from brand to brand, so there's not a, it's not a huge factor once you get into it. Okay, welder setup and use is very, very, very important because I'll tell you all you guys right now, the, we, we stand behind our products 100%. We, we have a one-year warranty on this product uh, on every part of it except for the heating element. And uh, that is probably the most common thing that happens when a shop gets the new welder. They're all happy about it. Of course, being men, for the most part, they don't read the instructions. They plug it in the wall, turn it on, and then they say, hey, this thing's not getting hot. It's because they didn't have any air flowing through the heating element, and it burned up already. Yeah, and there's a big yellow sticker on top of the welder that says the proper, tells you the proper set, start up and shut down procedures, and it clearly states that the heating element is not warranted. And uh, it's really the life of the heating element is totally in control of the user. So I can't emphasize that more. If you do sell one of these things or demo it, you want to make sure that every technician in the shop who uses it knows to turn the air on first and then the power. Get the air flowing through the element, then turn the power on. You want to keep the air flowing all the time while the power is on, while the heating element is hot. When you're actually ready to weld, like I said before, you want to switch over to the nitrogen. You don't want to use nitrogen at all times to because you know, it's uh, it's um, going to cool off. Oh, wait a second. If you use nitrogen all the time, it's going to blow that bottle out very quickly. So you only want to use it when you're welding. You want to switch back to shop air when you're not actually welding. And then at the end of the day or when you're done with that job, turn the power off first and let that air flow until it's completely cool coming out. If you do this procedure properly, the heating elements will last literally for years. If you don't do that properly, they'll last for minutes. So that is a very important thing. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. And uh, at some point in here, I'm going to switch over to a video where I can show you the actual process. Let me see if this next slide makes it sense. Okay, here, here's here's a picture of uh, a weld that we did. Uh, you know, basic tear to the edge of the bumper. Um, the bottom one shows a little uh, groove at the edge. Sometimes we'll lay in the, the round rod in there so it kind of embeds into the plastic. But the, the one you see on the top there, the T, it's actually welded down the crack and, and teed across the edge there for extra strength. Um, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to break off just for a second here. Let me, uh, I'll have to get back into this in a second. Let me uh, go back to my video here. This is a video off of our website. Um, uh, we've got probably over a dozen nitrogen welding videos on our website and also on our YouTube channel. Feel free to take a look at those anytime. Um, but this is a real short one here. It's a two minute long video. And I'm going to hit play here, and you guys can see um, that's a, a, a bumper tab that's basically torn open there. Okay. It's not real thin. I mean, I think that probably would be repairable with a two part uh, using that kind of plastic film and squeeze method. But uh, you'll see here, this is much faster. Now, first of all, uh, we use the super clean plastic cleaner to clean the plastic and get all the uh, road grime and oil and dust and stuff off of there. And then we are use aluminum tape to back it up. Use a uh, carbide burr. We're going to dig a uh, V-groove on both sides, and we're going to bevel it down. Okay. Then using the polypropylene welding rod and the hot nitrogen gas, we're welding right across that gap. Okay. We've got, we weld across the gap. We, um, you know, while it's still hot, we're coming right back. You see the hot nitrogen gas just is melting that plastic very nicely. We'll get, and this something like this where you got a fairly wide tab, you're going to make three or four passes along there just to build up that area real nice. Uh, but the main thing is you're you're welding continuously across with with the welding rod, and you're locking it into the bumper quite far on either side. And now you see the uh, 
the airless welder and we're smoothing that out. While it's hot, smooth it out. And now it's, once it gets uh, cool, it'll turn to the natural color, which is kind of a translucent white color. Uh, do a little do a little shaping on that with a with a razor knife, and then uh, DA with 80 grit, and we're going to buzz that off. And you'll see in just a minute here. Uh, oh yeah, open up the hole with the die grinder again. But you'll have a nice strong repair on that. Um, that's just right there. You just did a one-sided repair, but uh, which is more than sufficient for uh, most of the the strength, but uh, but a two-sided repair would be even stronger. Uh, I'm going to try to get back into this thing. Whenever you do that presentation, it always goes. Oh shoot! Let me see here. Sorry, guys. I don't know how to start the present or do the presentation from the middle. So I'm going to go through this again. Okay, I think we're pretty close to where we're supposed to be. Testimonials. Okay. So we're back to this thing. Again, if anybody in the audience would like um, some literature on this or some links to the website or the videos, you'll have my uh, information at the end of the presentation. Just contact me, and I'll be happy to send that to you, some literature. And I'll, I can even send you hard copy literature in the mail, no problem. Uh, this kind of sh this little schematic is showing the basic flat weld, and there's, there's uh, four features, I guess, that we that are important that we call it taps, temperature, angle, pressure, and speed. And the temperature coming out of the uh, the nitrogen welder there, of the, the nitrogen itself, is going to be around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's enough to um, melt the surface and the bottom of the rod there. The angle, you see there, the angle of the uh, welder to the work surface is about 45 degrees. And uh, you see the little line coming out of there. It's kind of focused a little bit more on the bumper than on, on the rod. Uh, some situations where maybe the plastic itself is extremely thin, you may want to focus a little more on the rod than the bumper. That's, that's really where the experience comes in. And even in a one-hour training session, it's really hard to train on that, it's that sort of thing. I mean, you, you can, it just takes experience, honestly. And I think the technicians that are in body shops have got – the skills they got the hands-on skills they just they just lack and need a little bit of uh, practice with it. Uh, TAPS uh, temperature angle pressure. The pressure is not the pressure of the air coming out, but rather the pressure down on the rod. When you're doing your weld, you you want to melt the bo the bottom surface of the rod and the top surface of the bumper simultaneously and press down on the surface so that that while they're both melted, it fuses together. So it takes a little downward pressure on the rod, and you just you don't want to force it. it. It really, once you get it to proper temperature with a little downward pressure, it just kind of folds into itself. And uh, again, you you can see that more clearly in the videos that we have on our website than than what I can tell you. And then finally, the speed. Uh, it's very important to keep your speed down. Most guys, of course, they want to rush through it. Uh, they go in, they're welding too fast and they're not getting a good bond. You want to weld at a speed that will give you about a four to six inches per minute. Uh, which, you know, once you get it started, that is pretty fast, but uh, it does take a little restraint to make sure both the bumper and the rod are, are melted properly. Okay, now let's get back to you know, the brass tacks about how to sell these things. Okay, you guys are. You guys are jobbers for the most part. You're you're looking at this thing and saying, hey, what can I do to make some money with this? Um, number one, you know, we, we talked about the awareness in the industry. The, the insurance companies are pressuring. So I think the time is right now for a jobber to go into a shop and say, hey, have you seen this new technology? And uh, when you whip out the brochure, you're probably not going to sell a $3,000 piece of equipment using a, an info sheet. So... The shop demo is really the only way to sell this welder. Um, unless you have got a demo unit yourself, you're going to have to rely on one of the factory guys to do it. I've got four salespeople that cover the entire United States, and I'll show you a, a map of the territories uh, in a few slides from now. But what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll do a three-day blitz usually. We'll travel on Monday and Friday, and then you got us for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We can do a three to four quality demos per day, depending on windshield time. And therefore, we'd, in that time span, we'd be able to visit your top 10 or 12 prospects. And uh, 
I arrange these all the time. Unfortunately, with the, the demand that I've got for uh, from the field, uh, my guys are scheduled out into June right now. So uh, if you want to do this sort of thing, give me a call as soon as possible. We'll get you on the on the list. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy to call for, for the factory salespeople. Um, here's the territory map. Um, the green and the western states, we've got Peter Van out there. He's based in Southern California. He covers all the western states. Um, you can call him. I hope you can see the cell phone number. Go ahead and jot it down or his email address. Go ahead and, and uh, contact him. He does his own scheduling out there, so uh, you can call me, and I'll get you in touch with Peter, but he would be he would be scheduling his own time. Uh, up in the upper Midwest in the orange-shaded states, you got Greg Borst. He is a new addition to our staff. Bought him on last year. Formerly with Fond du Lac Bumper Service, uh, extremely knowledgeable about bumper repair, and uh, he's knocking them dead up there uh, in that area with uh, with the welder. Uh, again, you can jot his cell phone number or his email address down. He does schedule his own appointments up there. For all the other areas of the of the country, uh, as you said, 35 states that are in white there. We've got two guys, Bill Athan and Leon Roberts, that cover that territory currently. And I am the one who schedules their time. So, you know, just call me at the toll-free number for the factory or email me, and we can start the conversation about getting somebody up there to uh, help you sell these things. Okay, and I think we're getting close to the end of our little deal here. Okay, another option is, uh, you know, you don't have to wait on the factory. You can get a demo unit and get trained to sell it yourself. Uh, in fact, just two weeks ago, we had a big jobber training session at our factory here. And I know that one of uh, a couple of Medco's customers were here getting trained on how to how to uh, to demonstrate these things, not just the technical aspects about how to weld, but also how to sell them. Uh, we are holding open some time to do another uh, factory training session here, so if you're interested in that, that'd be great. Uh, we can also, you know, for example, if you're interested in, uh, learning how to demonstrate it yourself, go ahead and get a demo unit in. We'll send our, our salesperson up to your territory, and we'll do three days of sales calls with you to train your salesperson how to do the demos and also give them the hands-on technical training they need in the evening. So they can come out of a week of work with urethane supply and have the tools you need to go ahead and go out to the other customers you have and sell this thing in our absence. You don't, you don't need to have the factory guy there. And we do have a re, uh, really attractive reduced price demo unit available. The way that works is um, you get the demo unit for fourteen ten forty seven. This is a real. This is uh, less than Medco's price. That's why we have to do that direct with the factory. Um, there's only the restriction is there's only one per jobber. Okay, we're not gonna we're gonna, not gonna do more than that. And the intention of it is you go out with this demo unit and sell it to. Um, all of your prospects, and uh, once you have shown it to all of your prospects and you've promised it off to somebody who wants to buy it at a, at a reduced price, you go ahead and sell it to that prospect, We and then we'll restock it from the factory with fresh, a whole new supply of welding rod and a fresh heating element and no cost. So this is like the, your customer will be in a brand new unit with a little bit of, you know, scratch and dent on it. But the jobber sales training is a must. We're not going to send out a job. We're not going to send out a demo unit if you haven't been trained on how to use it. So we got to do that together. Either you come to the factory, or we'll come to your territory and train you while we're doing some sales calls. And here is my info, and I think that's the last slide. It's got my contact info. The 800 number is 800-633-3047, and. I'm here from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time, just about every day. And uh, my number's Kurt. I mean, my email is Kurt at urethanesupply.com. And I want to thank you guys for your your interest in in the system. And I uh, would, uh, at this point, I guess, ask for any questions. Um, you guys from Midco, if you want to give me some instructions what to do right now, I'd be happy to uh, do whatever you guys need me to do. Okay, well, thank you very much, Kurt. Very, uh, definitely a, a uh, incredibly informational uh, webinar. Um, I think uh, most of our customers will see the outstanding opportunity 
that lies ahead in plastic repair and specifically with the uh, nitrogen welding system. So we really want to appreciate your time tonight. Um, we thank you for making the presentation. Uh, for the Medco customers out there, uh, please tune in to uh, Medco Online uh, tomorrow uh, for two things. The presentation will be uh, loaded up on our Medco University library, so if you have other store employees or uh, other outside salespeople that didn't get the opportunity to tune in tonight and they'd like to uh, see the presentation, it will be on the uh, MAO website tomorrow, uh, as well as we will announce the winner of the 5600 HT airless um, welder unit that we will be giving away as a door prize. Uh, again, uh, thanks to Kurt for providing that uh, opportunity for us. So uh, once again, thank you for tuning in to Medco University. Uh, we look forward to bringing you even more uh, exciting uh, presentations in the future. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.